Hello and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for Free with Mr Estrick. This video is on the humoral response in immunity and that is linked to B cells. So we're going to be looking at B cells and antibodies in the humoral response. Now if you want to make notes just make sure you get some pen and paper and pause whenever you want to. So first of all, B lymphocytes, also known as B cells. These are lymphocytes, which are white blood cells involved in the specific immune response, meaning it's all to do with the response to particular antigens. All lymphocytes are made in the bone marrow and the B cells mature there too. The humoral response is the response involving B cells and antibodies. And the reason it's called humoral rather than the B cell response or antibody response is because an olden term, olden days term for bodily fluids was humor. And because the antibodies are soluble, they transport around in the blood and other bodily fluids. And that's how this term came about, the humoral response, because it's to do with antibodies which dissolve um, and are soluble in the blood. So B cell activation then. We talked in an earlier video, which I'll just link up here on antigens and lymphocytes, that you actually have approximately 10 million different lymphocytes and they are able to create different antibodies. And what that means is the antibodies that these B cells have on their surface will be complementary to 10 million different antigens. Antigens will be in the blood if you have a foreign particle or pathogen. And if they do collide with their complementary antibody on a B cell, the B cell takes in that antigen by endocytosis and then presents it on its cell surface membrane. So when this B cell collides with a helper T cell receptor, this is going to activate the B cell to go through clonal expansion and differentiation, which is sometimes known as clonal selection. So the B cell is going through mitosis and that will create large numbers of clones or identical B cells. And those B cells will then differentiate into different cells. So some will become plasma cells, some will become memory B cells. So the plasma cells will be able to make the antibodies and the B memory cells can divide rapidly into plasma cells. And if you are then reinfected with the same pathogen or the same antigens detected in the blood, you're able to make large numbers of these plasma cells very rapidly, which can then make large numbers of antibodies rapidly. So a bit more then about the memory B cells. These cells can live in your blood and your body for decades, whereas plasma cells are very, very short lived. So the advantage is, although the memory B cells do not make antibodies, they can divide by mitosis and make plasma cells very, very rapidly if they collide with an antigen they previously encountered. And that's what we're seeing here. The primary response is the first time that this B cell takes an antigen, presents it on its surface and becomes activated. It then either becomes plasma cells, which make antibodies, but some will become memory cells. And these then stay in your body for decades. But if that memory cell collides with the antigen that it's complementary to, it will then differentiate into more memory B cells, but also lots of plasma cells very, very rapidly. So they then get lots of antibodies very, very quickly. And what that means is you should then be able to destroy the pathogen so quickly that you don't ever get symptoms. And that's what we mean when we say we're immune to a pathogen. So that is your active immunity. You've been exposed to the pathogen to gain immunity. And this graph is often shown to demonstrate this. So we've got the concentration of antibody over time. And the first time you're exposed to that pathogen, you aren't able to produce as many antigens, um, antibodies, sorry, and you can't produce them as quickly. It takes much, much longer. But you will then have that store of memory B cells. So if you are reinfected for a second time, they will differentiate rapidly into plasma cells to make large, large quantities of antibodies in a very, very short space of time. And as we said, that means you will be able to destroy the pathogen before you get symptoms. 
So what are antibodies then? So antibodies are proteins and they are a quaternary structure protein. And I'll link here to protein just so you can recap on protein structure. It's four polypeptide chains. We've got two short chains on the outside and two long chains on the inside. Right up here is the variable region. And that's the part which will change in shape. And it's that bit which will be complementary in shape to a particular antigen. And that's where the antigen would bind. The constant region is shown in red. So that bit will always be the same. It doesn't change. The heavy chain is the name of the longer chains in the middle. And they're heavier because they are longer. And this then is the shorter and lighter chain. And as we said, the bit at the top, which is variable, is where the antigen binds. And the way then the antibodies are able to help destroy pathogens is by this process called agglutination. So the antibodies will bind to the antigens to create an antigen antibody complex. And antibodies are slightly flexible. And because of that, they're able to bind and then slightly twist and flex to attach to another antigen. And the result of this is you get multiple antibodies attaching to multiple antigens and clumping together. And that's what agglutination is, they're gluing together. And the reason that is helpful is if you've got a big clump of these antibodies um, with the antigen and therefore hopefully the pathogen, it makes it easier for the phagocytes to be able to locate and therefore far more efficient at engulfing. So in summary, B lymphocytes will respond to foreign antigens and through clonal selection, they'll end up releasing monoclonal antibodies. And that is what we mean by the humoral response. Clonal selection will then create plasma cells and memory cells, and the plasma cells release the antibodies, whereas the memory cells will remain in the blood for decades and will then be able to produce the plasma cells very, very rapidly if you re-encounter um, that antigen. Antibodies are quaternary proteins made up of four polypeptide chains. The variable region of an antibody is unique in shape. Antibodies bind to antigens to create an antigen antibody complex, and that will then lead to the destruction of the antigen or the pathogen through agglutination. And that's it. So if you would like to have a go at some practice questions to test your knowledge, then go to missestrick.com to practice those skills. If you found this helpful today, then do please give it a thumbs up.